Hi everyone, Pastor Anna here. Today is the first Wednesday night in our Lenten devotional series, Walk Dusty. Now, if you worshiped with us last week on Ash Wednesday, you were reminded that we are all dust. We come from dust and we return to the dust. In this Lenten season, we're leaning into that. We're walking this dusty road, this windy road, this wilderness road as we reorient ourselves toward Jesus, toward the way. As we go on this way today, we are reminded that we are not alone and we walk together. So during this series, you're going to be invited to have discussions amongst your household. And if you live alone and you don't have anyone to pause this video and chat with, we encourage you to call a friend, pick up a phone, call a friend, call a, a child, call your parent, call your sibling. If you don't know who to call to have these discussions, call the church and we will connect you with someone who is also looking to walk together on this dusty road this Lenten season. We're gonna start with our check-in. I have a couple of questions for you, and then I want you to pause the video, and I want you to just check in with someone. The first question is, when have you felt alone? How do you deal with the feeling of being alone? And when have you had to do something you didn't want to do? Just very briefly, um, I want to share with you all so that you all get to know me better as well during this time. I think I think one of the times in my life when I felt the most alone was when I was single parenting in seminary. I moved 11 hours away from any of my friends and family in Knoxville and ended up in Philadelphia on the United Lutheran Seminary campus. It was so hard. There was this constant fear of being in a city alone with my small children who at the time were three and six and I was alone. And I dealt with that feeling by leaning into it at first and doing what I do, processing how, how do I get away from this feeling? Um, this feeling of fear, right? The being alone, it, it instilled this like fear in me. And so I built community. I immersed myself in the seminary culture and seminary life and it was so beautiful. I made lifelong friendships. My kids found a godparent and it was beautiful. But the feeling of being alone, it was personally very scary. And I have a feeling that some of y'all have similar emotions around being alone. So I hope you had some fruitful discussion about it. Let's read our text for today. The first text for today it comes from Matthew chapter 26, it's verses 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. 
So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Jesus brought his disciples with him to Gethsemane because he was beginning to understand what God was asking of him. And he did not want to be alone. So I ask you, beloved, who are the people you bring when you are enduring a trial, when you are going through these times of trouble, who do you bring to the garden to pray with you? Pause the video, think about this, discuss this among those whom you are sharing this time. You know, I've always been an oversharer in my life. I don't know if oversharer is the right word, but I've always been a person that is very open and very direct. So I haven't had much of a problem asking for people to journey with me through hard times, but those people that I go to over and over again are the ones who have for lack of a better term, proven their loyalty to me. They've seen me at my worst. They have, they've seen me live lifetimes. I have a couple of friends who live in Ohio now, but we used to live in Tennessee together. And they have two boys, um, two, two sons, and they grew up with Lady and Ezra. And, you know, throughout my many phases of life, um, They've been there and they have seen my transitions. They supported me through my divorce. They supported me through seminary. They supported me when I met Monique and we got married. And I'm very thankful for them, for those people that God has placed in my life who love me no matter what I'm going through, whether I've, you know, caused a trial in my life or whether a circumstance has happened to me, I know that they will be there without judgment. Find some friends like that if you don't have them. All right, I have another question for you all. When have you walked with someone through a tough experience? And kind of a follow-up to that question, how can we support others when we don't know how to, or when we don't fully know what they're going through. Pause the video and think for a moment or chat amongst yourselves. I'll answer this question very briefly as well. And um, I didn't know what I was gonna say until just now. So uh, sorry for the lack of trigger warning, but I will be talking about child death. So trigger warning content note for child death. Um, you know, as pastors, we uh, are, are tasked with or um, joyfully like answer the call to journey with people through trials regularly. Um, but, but this story comes like in my previous life, in one of those lifetimes before um, I went to seminary and became a pastor. Uh, I was pregnant with Ezra and there were about, I don't know, five or six of my really close friends who were also pregnant at the same time. We were all due. Um, we all had babies back to back to back, I mean, days apart from each other. And uh, so we were all extremely pregnant. And one of our friends who had just had twins about a month before, um, in Knoxville uh, on April 1st we woke up in the morning and I was doing some classwork for undergrad and I looked on Facebook and she put out a prayer request in one of our um, crunchy mama groups and she said that her baby wasn't breathing and she asked for us to pray and 
we all dropped everything. You know, one friend met her at the hospital. The rest of us went over to her house. She had other children and she, her, her baby that wasn't breathing also had a twin. Um, and so we dropped everything. And then we got the most devastating news. And none of us, none of us knew how to support our friend who had just lost part of her heart. But one thing I have taken from that experience is the power of community. That God is, is present where two or three are gathered, where there is heartbreak when we don't have the words. We don't know how to journey together, but we just show up. And it was hard. But we also... We were also given the strength through the Holy Spirit to, to accompany our friend on this journey. So shake that off. It's a heavy story. Let's keep reading. There's another text for today that I want to share with you all. And it comes from Matthew chapter 5. And it's the 43rd through the 48th verses. You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So, a couple more questions and time to share amongst yourselves. This passage right here about love and forgiveness, it's, it's hard, right? It's hard sometimes to love those who have caused harm to you. So my question is, what do you think? Is it easier to forgive a close friend or someone that you don't really know? And the follow-up question to that is, how can forgiveness help us in the messiness of our lives? Let's go ahead and discuss. You know, I think one of the important things to remember about walking this dusty road together is that it's messy. Human existence is messy. Human relationships are messy. And we don't even mean for them to be most of the time. And one of the tools we have when life gets messy is forgiveness. You know, to answer that first question, is it easier to forgive a close friend or someone you don't really know? You know, I don't know. I don't know who it's easier to forgive, but I know that the hardest person for me to forgive is myself because when I am harmed or hurt or deceived by someone else it always comes back to me and I think I should have never let myself be vulnerable I should have never let myself be close enough to this person that I could have been hurt by them and so I think sometimes the person that I need to forgive is myself Pastor Vicki taught me about that, by the way. She teaches us a lot of those um, beautiful little gems that we should always try and remember and, and keep with us. And if I can forgive myself and, and let myself off the hook for being harmed by someone else, it's so easy to let someone else off the hook. So I invite you friends this Lenten season to be vulnerable, to be real, to be direct. Pick up the phone, 
and call someone that you miss and journey with them on the way this season. Let us pray together. God, we identify with hurt and pain that is often associated with this dusty road we must travel. As we move forward together through this season, be present with us. Help us to see your light guiding us on the way. Give us the strength when times are hard, when conversations are hard. Give us the strength to always choose you, God. It is in your name that we ask. Amen. See you guys next week.